environmental exposure, both combined could be a risk factor. So some people who can metabolize drug very fast in their body, they will be less susceptible because any toxin comes there, it gets detoxified and thrown out. But genetically we are different. Some people cannot catabolize it that fast. So if it accumulates in the system, then it could cause th that Parkinson's disease. Now I will introduce coenzyme Q10. Many of you might be taking it. You might have heard the news before that it was being tested clinically, but there was a problem with it. I will come to that a little bit later on. So coenzyme Q10 is a natural product. It is present in our mitochondria, the powerhouse, the Chernobyl, and it helps to generate the ATP and power. And we not only that, we have some hypothesis that CoQ10 in combination with vitamin E can keep the mitochondria intact and stable. And I will talk about that later on. The only one trouble with this is that it is highly oil soluble. All the CoQ10 available in the pharmacy store everywhere, in the gel, in the capsule, in the tablet, it's, it's just not soluble in water. So Dr. Sikorska at NRC and my previous mentor, she took this challenge to solubilize it and make it better bioavailable and see if it can be better than the oil soluble formulation. And now on we'll be calling it uh, UBSOL QE, soluble coenzyme Q10 with vitamin E. This is what we'll be calling it now onwards. So a new method was developed in that lab in NRC where Vitamin E was piggybacked with coenzyme Q10 and this was covalently linked to a hydrophilic molecule and this whole thing is called PTS and this structure made this oil soluble coenzyme Q10 almost water soluble in a, in a nanomycels. Actually I have a small video to show you. To achieve solubilization, the water-insoluble bioactive substance forms a complex with the hydrophobic subsection of PTS. When mixed with water, these components self-assemble, forming a hydrophobic interior containing the bioactive substance and a hydrophilic exterior. The result, a soluble, stable nanomycelle. how it makes it made it soluble and because of that novel formulation with two bioactive compounds, coenzyme Q10 as well as vitamin E together and not only together as oil soluble together as water soluble more bioavailable it, it, it has some wonderful property and that is what I am going to talk to you about today and actually I should go back now it is working. So again, this is just the visual example. This is what it will look like if you put your capsule or tablet or whatever CoQ10 you have in water. And this is what it looks like when it is solubilized. Okay. And this is the standby picture of those nanomycels. So this is the product we have been working with. Now with that, we had this objective that can we use this formulation which can prevent cellular death or neuronal death. Our laboratory, initially we started working with brain cells. Nobody will donate their own brain cells, so we establish a brain cell model whereby we have some commercial cell lines which are coming from the brain tumors. They can be forced to differentiate into neurons and then test the efficacy of this new formulation if it can protect them against toxins, against oxidative stress. This, these are the reasons why our brain cells die. So we took this challenge and the advantage now was that we have water soluble coenzyme Q10 which can be used in the aqueous media which we use to culture the cells. So these are the undifferentiated cells and they can be forced to differentiate into neurons like this. These are brain cells like cells. 
and this is another neuroblastoma cells converted to um, neuronal cells and they look like this and with that we did many experiment but I would like to have this attention to you of, of yours on this video it was day and night difference when we did this experiment these cells are unprotected no coke no uh, you be sal QE, uh, no, not this formulation. It was without any protection. And this is what happens. These cells look miserable. They start dying. And the challenge was hydrogen peroxide treatment, which is kind of mild oxidative stress, which our brain can feel sometimes. And this culture is with UV sal QE, the new formulation of coenzyme Q10 and vitamin E. You see, as if nothing happened. I am playing the video. I hope you can see the movement on this, but cells as if nothing happened. And Mariana has a term for it, as if they are just laughing at you. Okay? So this was very clear evidence that this formulation has something special is able to block neuronal cells in culture model. So these are standby pictures. Very clearly you can see this is unprotected cells and these are with UV sol QE, the new formulation. And you can see clearly how healthy they look. These are again same thing. These, cells, these bright cells like this are dead cells whereas those are healthy cells. Now S2O2 is not that common, we drink all the time, no, never, nobody drinks it. This was just a model. But this is common. Glutamate excitotoxicity is very common, one of the factors to kill the neurons. Glutamate is a transmission, uh, neurotransmitter, but if it is in excess amount, like dopamine in excess amount, can kill the cells. So, you use that model as well, and very clearly, this is without protection, and this is with UV sal QE. Very clear difference. Now we went on to a real toxin which we think is causing the trouble, the paraquat. So we use on these neuronal cells paraquat and indeed it was toxic. It killed those cells within 48 hours. However, if we do this treatment in the presence of coenzyme Q10 or UV sol Q, the new formulation, they were protected very clearly. And not only that, we also discovered that all those protected cells, the mitochondria, all these bright spots are indicating healthy mitochondria. And if we put paraquat on this, those mitochondria start dying, the leakage. So paraquat targets the mitochondria to kill the neurons, but if you have Q enzyme CoQ10 or UV sol QE, the mitochondria are protected. This is what we say that this formulation stabilizes the mitochondria, does not allow them to leak. And we showed it further with another cellular model where these are, these are the human fibroblast cells. They are, their mitochondria lose their potential or they die if you have a CO2 treatment. But if you do the same thing with this new formulations, mitochondria are intact. So on the cellular level, we clearly showed that this formulation was protect, offering a protection up to 90 to 95%. That was big hope for us. It was very exciting results. We published all these work in three internationally peer-reviewed journals. I was supposed to put those references here, but we couldn't get the time somehow today. Anybody needing that, I can always provide it by the email. I, ha I will have my email with the organizer. So what is the next thing? Everything works in the petri dish and cells. This is what people say. Dr. Jog is my collaborator or my fellow scientist and, and clinicians and he said everything works in the petri dish. The challenge is can it work in an animal model, in a really physiological model of neurodegeneration like Parkinson's disease. And that is what we took up as a challenge to establish. So before we do anything, any work with the animal, we have to find out if we give this formulation, water soluble formulation, which is UV sol QE in the water for animals to drink, and then see if it is absorbed by the body, and also see that if it crosses the blood-brain barrier. Because these are the main things for any therapeutic molecule. 
And these are the recent results. What we got was clearly after feeding the rat with water supplemented with Q Q10, our formulation, within one hour the amount was very high in the blood plasma. So see, he is drinking it through GIT, but blood level goes up. It indicates that it is very efficiently absorbed by the digestive system. Good. Not only that, we also saw the amount going up in the brain, which indicates that not only that, it goes in the brain, which means crossing the blood-brain barrier. See, in the plasma, it goes down afterward because all the amount is taken up by the tissues. This is the rat, and we did the same thing in the mice. In mice also, we saw that it goes into the brain. So this is very important result. To our knowledge, in the published report, this is the first one to show that in this formulation, the vitamin E and CoQ10 cross the blood-brain barrier, and they, the, the, the level in the, of CoQ10 increases in the brain. And now there is a good logic. If it goes in the brain, it got to do the good job. It got to protect those cells. So for that, we established this model that establish the first rat model. In the rat, if we inject the paraquat, the same toxin, will it develop Parkinson's-like symptoms? Will it cause the degeneration of the substantia nigra? And if it is so, can it be protected by CoQ10 feeding or CoQ10 giving in the water? Okay. So this was the next objective, and with that we went. The experiments were very simple. The essays were difficult. Experiments were simple. We took this whole bunch of rats, some of them we fed with water, and others we started feeding with our formulation, UV Sol Kiwi, and then later on challenged them with toxin, and toxin was paraquat. So we got the ethical approval from our animal care committee, it is very important, we make sure that animals are fine, this, and we have to choose a dose which does not cause lots of toxicity. Paraquat can cause lung toxicity and so on. But it chose a dose where it causes only dopaminergic neuron, neuronal degeneration. And that, that is where I contacted Dr. Cohen, who is a psychologist, and he is expert in animal behavior. He will be talking at the end of this talk for a few minutes, showing some video. So our idea was that we challenge them with and see if there is any behavioral deficit first if there is any motor problem or turning around problem. And once we establish that, then we see if there is any, any difference between the control group without our formulation and the other group which took this formulation. So this was the prophylactic essay or, or study where animals were given our formulation or coenzyme Q10 vitamin E right from the beginning, before we inject the toxin. And this one is unprotected animal. So one of the essay we found that if you put the animals on the rotating rod, the animals which have got degeneration, which have got the problem because of the toxin, they have tough time turning around. So mostly they were turning, just, just walking forward. But if they are lesion, there is a problem, then they will, they can turn around. So there are lots of videos I don't have time to show, but I will show you two of these here. This guy was injected with a toxin, but did not get any water without, uh, with CoQ10. And what we call unprotected rat. And it is trying to turn around, but unable to. This is what it is. Now, this guy, he was also given paraquat injection, toxin injection, but he has been taking coenzyme Q10 or UV-Sol QE from beginning. And, well, he is quite comfortable, goes around. And we will wait till, it, till he turns around, actually. So what we found, I will show you the statistical result later on, that Coenzyme Q10 drinking or this UBSOL Q drinking animals were behaving as good as uninjected normal animal. That was the thing. He did not still turn around. 